I must say I'm very honored and uh, we are continuing this discussion. <laughs> we had a whole conversation uh, with Rachel and I'm um, now with uh, Kamanzi Wego. And uh, yeah, you're still on Super Soul Sisters, people. Yeah. And uh, to have our young women come out and do awesome things, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, plus also we're going away from the status quo where we think success is just, oh, I'm a doctor, I'm yeah. a lawyer. Of course we've had all of them, okay. But we also have uh, amazing entertainers. Now, yeah. our Super Soul sister. Hi, <laughs> thank you for having me on the show. Come on, see. Uh, thank you, it. thank you for making time. Mm -hmm. And um, I must say, it's quite an interesting, and I know we're going to go back to your story as well. Yeah. To have sisters who all sing and play some sort of instrument. <laughs> yeah. You guys are like, uh, what family? Let me look. Anyway, we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that must be a good feeling. That must be a good feeling that you all have a lot in common. Yeah. No one is left out. Yeah. That's interesting. So let's go back. Let's go back. I know Rachel okay. told us, but just to confirm, you know, people <laughs> need to be sure. <laughs> to be sure, yeah. Second-hand yeah, information. We're not just saying these not? things, yes. Yeah. So, um, who's Kamanzi? Um, Kamanzi is a firstborn child, mm -hmm. born to Mr. Leonard Rego and Ida Rego, mm -hmm. who um, have served, they're very humble people, but they've served in our ministry at different, you know, points mm -hmm. in their life. Mm -hmm. And so when they had us, they had, my mom had me when I was, when she was 24. Oh, okay, she was actually yeah. working at WBS with one of oh, the producers on that okay. show. And so we were basically, in, we were brought into the entertainment um, world while very young. Mm. I remember singing in church while mm. I was a child. My mom would drag us out, carry my guitar. I had to go play with the adults. Yeah. Same as Rachel, same as our last sister, Royal. Mm. And so I really um, used to define myself as, you know, Kamanzi is a girl that sings in big church. Mm -hmm. But over time, I've realized that that evolves, you know. Mm. Um, and so the more people keep asking me over time, the definition of myself evolves. So I would mm. say I'm a creative uh, you can see by the way that I dress, I to the way that see. I speak, to mm. the way that I, you know, every aspect of myself is yeah, I can see your earrings. I love them. Like, like light bulbs, like light yes. bulb moments yes. all the time. Yeah. I love them. I love them. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm a creative, 22 mm. years of age. Mm. Um, I uh, pursued a Bachelor of Arts in Mass Communication at Uganda mm. Christian University. Oh, we have so much. In, in common. common. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah, I love Where, where did art. you go for that? I went to Uganda Christian University. Oh my God, we have so much in common. Is that where you went as well? Mm. So anyway, let's not confuse the people. It's <laughs> let's not about not. me. Let's, let's not. About me. So yeah. growing up, um, being the first child, I know we've, we've heard from Rachel being the middle child, mm. but growing up being the first child. So wait, your mother is a musical person as well. I'm, I'm, um, mm. Saying she's musical, honestly, would be limiting. Mm -hmm. um, her enti the entirety of who she is. Mm -hmm. Music is just one aspect of her life. She's extremely industrious. She is mm -hmm. extremely entrepreneurial as well. Mm -hmm. Very brilliant lady, um, good with people, a social mm -hmm. worker. She's mm -hmm. really smart when it comes to sciences. So she's just a whole package. She's Maybe whole I'm package. biased <laughs> because Maybe, she's my mother, but, it's but okay. yeah. It's okay. Yeah. You have to hear these things from your people. Yeah. And your dad, is he also musical in a sense? Yes, he ha he is. And mm -hmm. if you ask him, this word will say, it'll be like, I met your mom in church. She fell for me because I used to <laughs> Thing. <laughs> um, but he's um, always veered more towards ministry mm -hmm. and you know pastoring, preaching, mm -hmm. teaching, leading young people. Okay. And so we really had the best of both worlds growing up mm -hmm. to be able to harness the different things we're passionate about. Mm -hmm. Mine was mostly music. Yeah. Everybody knows Rachel's as acting. Yeah. Royal is more the in between child who's very good at both of what she's we like. Do. Oh, I want to do this. I, I want to do this. this, this, this well. Yeah, she's really. Yeah. 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 Okay, that's quite interesting. So. Um, growing up, you said you, 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 they would give you your guitar or you have to go to church Honey. and play. When did you learn? Do you remember when you started learning guitar yes. and who told you? So, quick story. I was mm. 11 and mm. uh, like I said, my mom's very industrious, so she was well connected in the entertainment field. And so mm. there's a gentleman called Sharp Sewali. Mm. I don't know if you know him. Mm. Uh, he asked my mom for two cast members, a mother and a daughter, to act in a, in a FIDA advert against, I think, um, domestic violence or whatever. Mm -hmm. So my mom's like, hey, instead of you know outsourcing, I'll be the mother, I'll call my firstborn child to be the daughter. Mm -hmm. And I remember vividly, it was 2011, I was 11 years old. Mm -hmm. um, we did the advert and I got 350,000. Nice. You know? Mm -hmm. And so my mom's like, okay, so what are you going to use the money for? So I was like, I want to buy a guitar. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to play guitar. Yeah. So she's like, okay, so we buy a guitar. My first, it was a second-hand guitar, white in color. I'll send mm. you some videos for you to see. Yes. Um, and yeah, so she taught me my first four chords. 
D, E minor, G and A, which are the simplest chords yeah, to the, play. Yeah. And so, yeah, I used to practice every day, day and night. I used to put in my hours. Until now, I overtook the lady. I'm much better than she is. But You're outdoing the teacher, yeah, yeah? I'm so glad to say that she's the one that taught me my first chords okay. on the guitar. That's, that's, yeah. that's quite beautiful. So where did you go to schools? Like, where did you go in um, primary, primary and kindergarten? And, yeah. Okay, so I went to Peak Kindergarten, mm -hmm. my amazing childhood school. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in kindergarten, I was about six years old. I went to Word of Life International School. Oh, okay. And yeah, it used to be in Tinder, moved to Muyenga, and now mm. it's in Chitende. Okay. I'm so grateful to say that Word of Life created spaces and platforms where we could really practice guitar, practice mm -hmm. voice. The things you like. The things we like, to mm -hmm. be honest. And I like to tell people many times when they ask us, you know, how are you so musical? How do you do acting? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, parents need to be intentional about the type of spaces they um, create mm -hmm. for their children while growing up. Because those are the things that the children will like to after do, all, you yes, know? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we used to practice a lot. There was a lot of, you know, um, singing in chapel. I always used to sing in chapel. Yeah. And remember, I'd come back home every uh, Saturday and Sunday and then have to go to church for rehearsal. Mm -hmm. So it was really just music all the so way. So basically, you, you were occupied as, as, a, as a young girl. Time. You didn't have time to be crazy and stubborn and you um, know, lose your way? No, that would be a lie. <laughs> <laughs> As a firstborn child, I like to tell my sisters, mm. I set the pace for them. Yeah. And people think it's only in the good sense, but yeah. even in the bad sense. Mm. I, I was the one that set the way for, say, like us coming home later, later. than usual. <laughs> um, going out, getting reprimanded, so we know where the boundary yeah. is. So yeah. I was really like the guinea yeah, pig. Yeah, you definitely. Yeah, I took all the, the first blows. child. Yeah, yes. but you know, I'm, I, I have the grace for it, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. which is what Rachel knows she doesn't have, Roya knows she doesn't have, yeah. and I don't have the grace to be the second child. Or the yeah. Third. So, so what was that like being the first child? Because, you know, uh, first, first ch children are as pampered, hey. even when you, you do the wrong thing, eh? <laughs> Not in like, my oh, household. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I like to bring this up. My mom is mm. Lugbara. Mm. My dad is uh, uh, Mufumbira. Mm. Randy is Mufumbira. Mm. And so by virtue of the fact that they come from completely different traditions, yeah. the culture is different. Mm. My dad is more laid back. When we're having fights about what time are you coming home, come on, see, my dad is always quiet. My mother is the, you it's know, the, one who's like, the assertive mm -hmm. chick from the north who's mm -hmm. like, Madame, you better be Andres Onji, which means like, mm -mm, those are not good manners. Yes. You know, so, um, yeah, I, I really just had to pick from both cultural backgrounds and kind of use those skills and those lessons mm -hmm. to better myself as a person. As a person yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. So now, uh, being in school, what, what, what do you remember? When you said not necessarily, what do you remember in school? And, and you look back and say, hmm, <laughs> why did I even? Um, hmm. Funny enough, I don't know if I have any of those moments. Mm -hmm. Because I believe that every aspect of my life, at whatever point it was, mm -hmm. has made me who I am today. And okay. I'm proud of who I am today. So whether mm -hmm. it was embarrassing stuff or whether it was, I don't know, flanking a, a, mm -hmm. a test, test or whatever, yeah. I'm just like, I was present then and I learned those lessons mm -hmm. and I'm here now. Okay. Um, I guess the only difference I would say, or the thing I look back and say, mm, was the fact that because we grew up in such a confined Christian environment, mm -hmm. it was very easy not to understand um, people who didn't come from that background. Mm -hmm. And remember, we don't choose where we're born. Exactly. I didn't choose to be born in a minister's home. I didn't choose to be minister, I mean like church, mm -hmm. you know, religious minister. Mm -hmm. I didn't choose to be born of a brilliant lady. Mm -hmm. So by virtue, children have this thing where you think you're better than anybody else mm, because maybe mm. you go to a better school or you have better skills. Along the way, I've learned that because we come from different backgrounds, Background, yeah. we're just all different. There's no one who's better than the other. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and quite often, you know, people can get offended by this. Yeah. So how you deal with it is what makes it's, the difference. That is true. Mm. That is true. So now when, when you were, you did on a level, same school? Yes, I did my O and A level in Word of Life. Okay. Um, in between my O level and A level, I uh, went to the school of my dreams, Berkeley College of Music, which okay. is in Boston, Massachusetts. Mm. Now, throughout high school, I worked so hard with a vision and a goal to mm -hmm. study music. Mm -hmm. And I knew if it was going to be music, I had to go to the best school. Mm -hmm. 
So you can ask my teachers, you can ask my peers, you can ask my family. I used to work so hard in music, in the arts, to make sure my grades were so good okay, yeah. that when I applied to my Ivy League school, I'd get in. That you'd get and in. fair enough, I actually got in. So wow. I first went for a five-week summer program. Mm -hmm. I met amazing human beings there. Yeah. Applied from there, and I was the best in my class. So I got a $20,000 wow. scholarship. That's nice. Yeah. So, you know, I had to come back and now do my A-levels, but in my head I was so I was assured because like, mm -hmm. I had gotten is, into, yeah. you know, I had gotten into the school. Now, because it was an Ivy League school, tuition was about $40,000, between $40,000 oh. and $50,000, mm -hmm. which at that time was about 80 million Uganda mm -hmm. shillings at the very mm -hmm. least. And that's just tuition. Yeah. So I'm here thinking, okay, I'm the firstborn child. Rachel that follows me was um, doing, she was about to do her O-levels, mm -hmm. and they were quite expensive. So I was thinking, okay, God. I need not I, to I, put my parents under pressure, pressure yeah. you know. Um, if this is supposed to happen, let it happen. Mm. And so I wait, I wait, I wait. And um, I was not able to go because of finances. Mm -hmm. And so I remember telling God I had an ultimatum. Either I went to the school of my dreams or I was going to stay here in Uganda and help my mom and, and my mom, dad yeah. kind of mm. run the home and stuff, mm. which is what I did. That's how I ended up at UCU studying mass communication. Mass communication. So yeah. mass communication was your first option or you're like, eh, let me just... Mass communication was my only option. <laughs> Like, like I said, I'm not doing all these other I was things. like, no, 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 no. And mm -hmm. it's funny when I applied because my grades weren't bad at all. Mm. I applied and I remember, I don't know if you remember, there were mm. three options. You had to have three options. Yeah. Like option one, option two, option three. Yeah. I just put one and I was like mass communication. Yeah. And so when I got in, I, I was speaking to one of the like personnel of the school and they were like, why don't you apply for law? And in my head, I thought... This is a system that yeah. thinks that law, engineering, those are yeah, the elite, the, yeah. you know. And I'm mm. like, no, I'm passionate about music, and music is a form of communication. The next best alternative is really communication for that's me, true. and that's all I was willing to take. So mm -hmm. I told her, no, I just want to ask communication. Which year was this time? This was in 2018, mm -hmm. um, when I came back from Berkeley. Yeah. And so I got into UCU in 2019. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, that's, that's quite a year. <laughs> yeah, imagine, that, that and was, uh, I only had one year of um, physical class, mm -hmm. and then COVID hit. And then COVID, yeah. So it completely changed the dynamic of education and mm -hmm. studying. Mm -hmm. Everything became so different. I don't so, want to say yeah. difficult, mm -hmm. but it was really hard to kind of get accustomed I mean, catch up, considering you have a class... Precisely. Um, that's, uh, you're supposed to be online. Yeah. And you know our challenges here sometimes. Uh, it's, it's, it's the digital the, divide is so yeah, big. It's so big. And Rachel, my sister, is more of the academician. Mm -hmm. I really kind of, I don't say you, I you, phased you through your, school. You had your eyes on something. Yeah. On my, something me, else. I knew my life was going to be different from the word go. <laughs> I was not all about you getting straight like, Guys, I'm not going to stress you yeah. over, I don't know over, this and that. This is, this is I exactly knew what, what I wanted. I wanted to do from so, the get So, but how does the mask come? influence or help you within your your My your goal build. of doing music because you are a singer yeah. yeah but how does mass communication then influence or reflect onto that's a brilliant question mm. Mm. and i like to answer this question mm. especially to people that are usually confused about what they're passionate about yeah. versus what they're told to study yeah. you know or want to study and like i said because I know I was passionate about music and, you know, expressing myself, mm -hmm. I knew that to be extremely good at that, I needed to learn how to communicate, you know? People think mass communication is, hey, you want to, go to, you want to be on TV, go to mass communication. Mm -hmm. no, you want to go it's to tough. radio. <laughs> and for me, I looked at it as something completely different. Yeah. I like to read. Rachel likes to read as well. Rachel yeah. is more a fiction type babe. I like to read intellectual books. Yeah. And so there's a writer called Robert Greene. He wrote The 48 Laws of Power, The Laws of Human Nature. Mm. Um, a gentleman called Malcolm Gladwell who talked mm. about outliers. Those people who are now modern critiques talk about how you need to look at life in a bigger picture. Don't box yourself or box your perception yeah, of what yeah. things are. Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. when you go to study, because you're studying a bachelor of, I don't know, in sciences, in, I don't know, maybe medicine, doesn't mean that that's all you have to do, medicine, pharmacy, or whatever. Mm. It's a lot bigger. You get to meet people, you learn how to interact, you go mm. through, I, you know how mass communication mm. was. Mm. There yeah. was the hands-on part, there was the yeah. more I remember, you know, they would parts. make you do film, or film, maybe do interviews, or photo radio. Journalism. Yes. And I can assure you that those skills that I attained mm. through mass communication are what broke me 
through the internet during COVID, like I said. Mm. Because during COVID, I was less physically in school. Yes. And so I had, at that point, at the time, I think I had an iPhone 6 mm. with space of 16 GB. Mm. So I used to, you know, record myself randomly singing stuff or whatever. And mm. I needed to back it up because I didn't have um, mm. space at that time. Mm. And I remember thinking, okay, let me get a... a Instagram account and post videos on there. Those videos up till now get me gigs. Nice. Up till now, the videos I used to post during 2019, 2020, mm -hmm. are what get me gigs. And the only way I could have learned to do that is through studying mass communication, yes. you know? Yes. Um, another big plus for me is, even while I know you can learn that on YouTube now, mm -hmm. the people you meet in university, in school, Many people who are passionate mm -hmm. about music end up saying, I don't want to go to school because I and Jagala I don't want to go to school. Mm -hmm. It's different, guys. In school, you meet people who will push you forward. All kinds of people. All kinds of people from like, different walks and backgrounds. So you're basically exposed. Yeah. To, to so for me, I looked at school like that. I wasn't in school to study. But I you was I did study you learnt, because you learnt, that's why I'm yeah. there. You mm -hmm. come out with the degree, you yeah. the degree. And but beyond the, the degree, the day, sometimes I believe it's beyond the degree because you meet people, you learn people networks, skills, people skills. Mm. You learn how to overcome situations, how mm. to spend money. I remember my mom would give me a certain amount, <laughs> and I would blow it. So I learned how to, you <laughs> At know, some point you're like I'm too broke, like I can't I'm too broke, home. I can't call home. You have yeah. to figure it out. Yes. I wouldn't have learned that if I hadn't gone to university. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm glad I was able to cleave those two things. Um, from what I'm picking, you started recording yourself, uh, putting clips on Instagram. Yeah. Um, and then the first time, how, what was the first time you approached for a gig? Did okay. you go looking out for one or did people approach you and say, hey, we... If I'm being completely honest with you, up till now, mm. I seldom look for the gigs. Yeah. There's a verse in the Bible that says your gifts will put you before kings. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that play in my family. Mm -hmm. so much that those who say they don't believe in God, I'm just like, I don't know how you do it because me, it's yeah. literally only been God. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't even plan to become famous or anything through mm -hmm. Instagram or mm -hmm. I, I wasn't looking for anything in particular. I've told you the story. It was yes. because of space on space my phone, in your phone <laughs> literally. Yeah. Um, you know, but the gigs I've been able to get over time are as a result of just the consistency that I, I picked yeah, from yeah, doing yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah. Um, many times, even till now, people just approach me based off the things that I put out there. Yeah, yeah. that's nice. I need to look out for you and, and uh, see some of these Please clips. do. I'm <laughs> available. I, I am very interested in music, so yeah. I, I would love to, to, to listen to that. Okay. So now, what genre or what style of music are you leaned into? I know being from a Christian background, being yeah. a Christian girl, uh, there could be some kind of limitations in a sense. Mm. Hmm, is that the right word, limitations? Anyway, <laughs> along those lines. So, I get what you mean. Um, what are you leaned into most, like uh, a style a or an style. era or something like that? So I'm African, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm very Afrocentric. Okay. Um, I grew up listening to, well, Hill song, Planet yeah. Shakers, mm -hmm. gospel type music. Mm -hmm. um, and so I have that natural born soul, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. And I also like to communicate. And so I know that the best way I know how to, through my guitar, or through my violin, or through my voice, is mm -hmm. through soul music. So I like to cleave fusions of Afri Afrocentric sounds with. Mm -hmm. um, you who, know. Who, who are you lending to? Which artist do you. That's a, <laughs> that's a good question. Mm. Now, I listen to everything, literally every I genre think. of music. That's nice. why I haven't answered your question about the genre. Yeah. Because I can rap, I can sing. I what? Can... You can what? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. We're, we're going to hear this. You want to hear? I will <laughs> I'll give you. Please go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think mm. I don't like to box myself into a particular genre, but mm. I do know that when I'm communicating, your soul will resonate with it. And okay. I'm very intentional about okay, that's it. Really. Yeah. Personally, I am stuck into one. Really? Okay, not one. But like they're within the same line, You're like okay. like maybe soul, jazz, okay. blues, along those lines. So, doing music, yeah. what has it exposed you to? Um, you're a young girl mm. of 22. You're from a Christian background, yeah. but here you are. You know, uh, here you're, I am. you're a communicator. You're on in, in Instagram. You're putting your music clips. Yeah. What has it exposed to you in a sense of? I, I want to hear all of it, the all good and it, the, the bad. The good and the bad. Yeah, because yeah, it's. Yin and yang, and everything mm, good, there's something is bad, everything mm. bad, there's something good. Except God, I like mm -hmm, to say yeah. at the end, because <laughs> God, all things are good, I yeah, believe. Yeah. Um, in Uganda, I, um, 
first of all, I'll start with the theory or the belief that you can't give what you don't have. Mm. So what you put in is essentially what will come, come out. out. Mm. You know, which mm. is why for religious people who think, ah, only sing Christian music, I see what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Do I believe in it entirely? No. Mm -hmm. But I see what they mean. They mean that whatever you put in is what you'll bring out. Bring out yeah. And so in that sense, I lis I've listened to the likes of Judith Babidier. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I've listened to the likes of Lillian Babazi. And mm -hmm. I've picked so much from those two, even while they yeah. come from different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. That's in the Ugandan context, you yes. know? Um, and then outside, I listen to people like Beyonce, and not just listen, by the way, but you, you literally watch their trends as well. Uh, yeah. What's mm. their lifestyle? What do they believe in? Things like that, you know, which inform how they communicate with you musically. Mm -hmm. And then I'll also listen to people like Taya Smith. I don't know if you know oh, Taya Smith or okay, um, Hillsong. Okay. Yeah, and then I listen to bands, I listen to rock music, I listen to quite a lot of music. So, so you're quite diverse? Quite mm -hmm. diverse, you'd be so what shocked. <laughs> what my playlist look quite like. Diverse. So, um, like I said, what, is, what has this exposed you to? Yes. You know, good things, there can be bad things, and bad things, good things. It really mm -hmm. all depends on how you perceive life and how you listen to it. Mm -hmm. Now, in any industry, you realize that um, there's a spirit behind everything, mm -hmm. you know? There's altars. Altars are so real. You'll go to mm -hmm. certain stages and just feel a certain type of way because of the type of altar that is. And so in that sense, you'll see people who have completely different ambitions from you yeah. on set. You know, you'll mm -hmm. go to a stage and maybe the person who's micing you, for him, he wants other things. You know, mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. he's more sexual, sexually oriented mm -hmm. or there's people that are just like... Um, want you or appreciate you for like materialistic things or maybe they see the potential in and, you and, and see and where you're going. some of these going. talents really get people confused. They get people confused, yeah. yeah. And so I'm so glad to have been covered by my mom and her prayers and the values she instilled into us. Mm -hmm. There's certain gigs I can't allow now. Or oh, now you've learned along the way. I'm, like, and I'm, I'm still I learning, not, it's yeah. always learning, you mm -hmm. know. But there's mm -hmm. certain gigs, you tell me about it and immediately, no matter how much you're paying, be like thank you very much but i'll have to decline and then there are some that are good you meet you meet people mm. network capital Networks is extremely good, good. Yes. um you're also exposed to how different cultures um work i've been in kenya and i've seen how quickly they work as opposed to uganda where mm. you say hey call oh, time is are, 10 o'clock someone used the word we are on a chill <laughs> we are on a big <laughs> chill guys yeah we're so laissez -faire. and it's like to, in some ex, in some context it's good but mm. in some i think it's uh, not someone really was telling me no it's because of, of who we are as people really i mean mm. I, I, there's reasons why probably yeah. it's our location we, 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 I feel like food that's basket. consolation. You I know? feel like it's consolation. I, Principle I is precedent. <laughs> you have to be punctual to be... And it happens a lot where people don't make it on time. Any yeah, time anytime. that you have gigs and um, you know it's going to go till late, yeah. but you thought maybe it will go to a certain, to a certain time. time or... um, how has that affected you, knowing that some of these gigs... Have you had gigs that are in the places you least expect to be in and it's like late hours? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Tons of those. Some mm. have had to stay out. Um, some have had to say travel, for example, and mm. you're not with mom who's going to be like, don't wear this or don't do that. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, the values that you have as a child is or what helps uh, uh, to... that you hold on to are what help kind mm -hmm. of, you know, mm -hmm. put boundaries. But I've also learned that you need a team of people to keep you accountable, keep, yeah. you know, and also stick to your values. And my mom's very big on that. Mm -hmm. People will treat you how you treat yourself. Yeah. If someone calls you for a gig and says it starts at 9 p.m., but then they begin at midnight and you allow and you stay there that long, they'll know that next time they'll call you for a gig on, on and the they can delay and it's okay. Yeah. So now I'll be like, okay, if it starts at, uh, if it starts at 9 p.m., I'm leaving at 11. I'll give you a time frame. That way you know that Kamanzi values her time mm -hmm. and we'll not take that for granted. You that know? is true. Yeah, that so you, true. you've got to put your values out there. Okay. So... I know for a fact you mentioned something. I think you're being very subtle about it. Being a young girl, being quite talented, dealing with so many people, uh, maybe a couple of guys have been, you know, drifted away mm. from the point of music. That's such a nice euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, drifted. So, um, and, and you know, you're like, I'm working with these people. How then do you deal with maintaining relationships without necessarily without. Um, going astray or, you know, people get mad for that. True. You know, or I, I could just hear you sing and I'm like, hmm. Mm. You're, you're, you're gorgeous, you're, you're singing well, but I'm like, mm, 
No, I don't think so. Yeah. When, when, how do you deal with things like rejection or too much pressure from from people? Yeah. Uh, like in this case, we've mentioned you're a young girl, and so many people are coming your way with all these different things. Different ideas. Uh, and you're a Christian girl, so basically yeah. the background <laughs> is, is suited for something else, yeah. and all of these things keep coming at you. That's a good question, and there's so many answers to mm. that that I've seen over time. And again, I'm still learning these things, mm. but I've learned that first and foremost, you have to value yourself. You need to know who you are. Mm -hmm. That way you know what you're taking and what's a no-no for you. <laughs> you <laughs> yes, know? That's true. And I think what's helped, like I said, was communicating, learning how to communicate and realizing that some people, for them, they don't even see that it's obnoxious or disrespectful to like cut call you on set. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's all they know. People only know as much as they know. That's true. And so I can't lash out at you because it won't change anything. Mm -hmm. I have to find a way to communicate with you and be like, excuse me, sir. I'm your do I like to call people uncle, friends mm -hmm. owning. Every guy I meet, I'll be like, hi, uncle. <laughs> uncle. And my friends know that it's a thing I do. <laughs> so I'll communicate and show you that, you know what? That's. Mm -hmm. It's, it's really uncouth of you. You're yeah, disrespecting my, me, but you're also disrespecting yourself to do such a yeah. thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Second thing would be boundaries and accountability. Yeah. Um, let people know where you are, what you're doing. You find That's that true. many girls, That's especially true. in yeah. this um, industry, because I feel like over time it's been... It's been a strain for women to come out into things like this because of the African traditional mm -hmm. religion mm -hmm. that believes that people a are woman sure stays home yeah. at home. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, she stays at home and cooks and cleans. You're not supposed to be on TV. Those are by eye. You're not mm -hmm. supposed to plate this or have mm -hmm. piercings. I've learned that, no, at the end of the day, it's accountability. My mom yeah. knows where I'm going, like, 80% of the okay, time. Okay, I like that. <laughs> I was going to say, you're kidding I'm, me. No, like, that would be a lie. That would be a lie. But she knows, she, at least Most she knows of the who time I'm with, she knows who, who what to get I'm in doing. Touch with in case, yeah. If Kamanzi goes off the grid mm -hmm. for a while, she'll know who to call because mm -hmm. I'll tell her, okay, I'm going here. I'm, so that accountability is important, but also valuing myself enough to know that I can't be seen in certain mm -hmm. places. Mm -hmm. Even while you have the urge to go and give it to that you do, like, sometimes you're like, ah, yeah. like, no. So um, you, you've Graduated or about to graduate? I'm going to graduate. You're going to graduate. Right, okay, yes. that's interesting. And um, while you're doing music, uh, this COVID time that came through, of course, a lot of things changed. Yeah. Um, how have you been able to balance? Because, see, sometimes people say when you have a lot of things to do, you get confused or you get lost. Yes. I've experienced <laughs> that first time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, it was always... My existential crisis really was a very an orthodox one because like you said mm -hmm. most people's problems are figuring out that one thing they can focus on yeah. me i enjoyed and was skilled and competent in a bunch of things yeah. that all that i that i was aware i needed time so i didn't want to be like uh i don't want to be mediocre in all of them 20 percent 30 percent she can eh, mm -hmm. koko, she can sing she can act <laughs> eh, she's, she's a yeah, model she's, she's, you know, yeah i wanted um, to be good at something each of those each things. of those things and be mm -hmm. like Oh, you know, Kamanzi, yeah, the chick who said, like, it did, my name needed to be mm -hmm. enough. Okay. Um, well, mm. And I realized that, yeah, I needed to put time in those different things. But then there's also seasons. Mm. There's a point where I was acting more than I was singing. And oh. I made sure I put 100% into it. Okay, life. we're going to get into that part. Now, a quick yeah. reminder, we're here at Daughters um, Exclusive here on Ginger Road. They're giving us space. Yeah. Uh, they're allowing us to have such beautiful interviews uh, here at Spear House, not Spear Motors, people. Because every time he says Spear House, someone's like, huh, Spear Motors? <laughs> <laughs> no, Spear House. Yes, yeah. and uh, what, what was WBS, if you know, you know, along the stretch here or by the road. And uh, you cannot get lost. Beautiful furniture. You should check it out. Eh? Yeah, the Lo it's is, lovely space, right? The aesthetic is and, so and I must say uh, quickly that uh, I'm enjoying myself. We're bringing young girls, young ladies. Yes, I'll use the word ladies because of how they are uh, handling themselves <laughs> and carrying themselves. And these are some of the things that are quite very key. Yeah. And they're here to tell us about their story. So when we said success, and that's why I was very clear, that when you talk about bringing soul sisters, we're not just saying, oh, oh, it has to be someone of a certain age yeah. who has accomplished a certain thing. As long as you're quite an example, and a good example for our young men and women out there, we'll definitely keep bringing such amazing people. Now, of course, you can go on YouTube at uh, Soul, uh, and you'll get us at um, 
Super Soul Sisters UG. Remember, it's like a three. And then uh, on TikTok, at Super Soul Sisters. Awesome. Again, the S is like a three. Mm -hmm. And then Instagram, or what the young people like to call Insta. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can get us at uh, Super underscore Soul underscore Sisters. Now, do check us out. Um, on Twitter, it is at Super Soul and uh, of course the S is like a three. Please engage us, talk to us. I'm sorry, I keep looking through because there are quite a number of them. Uh, like she said, it's, it's a world now, a digital world, and I, I don't think I'm that old, but I'm, you know, we're different. Yeah. But uh, I'm getting there. And I must say, please do check us out, look at, at these amazing episodes. We have our young girls today. We've started off quite well having, I mean, people may assume, oh, when we bring a soul sister, it has to be something. Um, yeah. We're quite diverse, okay? okay? And we have our young girls here who are showing us that, you know what, when you want to do something, you can actually accomplish it. Mm -hmm. That's where our parents come in. Identify, yeah. help. Do not discourage. This is where friends and community comes in. Identify, help, do not discourage. If you see someone doing amazing things, please do not feel angry with yourself. You also have something awesome True. that you can do. True. So every time you discourage talented people, yeah. you know, that means they'll not, and, and, and you know, artistic people get into a deep hole of depression the moment they feel discouraged. Yeah. You may, you may be the reason why someone doesn't come back. Still here with uh, Kamanzi. And you talked about acting. Yes, I did. Let's go. Let's go back to, back where, to how this <laughs> how happened. How it all began. Because we've been on music, we've yeah. been about school. So how did acting come in? How did it happen? That's, uh, again, um, mm. I gave you the example of my the first ad I did when I was yes, 11. When you're, yes. That really just broke the... It broke that barrier for me, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not, to be honest, I'm not passionate about acting as much as I am music. Mm -hmm. um, I usually lean towards music, but like I said, I like to believe that every skill you acquire betters you as a person. Mm -hmm. Whether it's me learning how to not hair or mm -hmm. to cook mm -hmm. or any of that stuff, I'm just like, yeah, it can make me better. Mm -hmm. And fair enough, being competent in acting was one of those things that I didn't know would yeah. take me places. Mm -hmm. And it kind of has to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. And so... So where have you acted? What have you done? Yes, that was where I was going No, is this that. in the, between 2019 as well? Um, While so, you were doing music? No, a little before that, I actually acted on a show on NTV called Hashtag Family. Oh, okay. Um, it used to air on a weekly. So yeah. you were there with your sister? With yes, Rachel. I actually was. It mm. was directed by the Nabuisos, who now directs Sanyu, that's mm. on Palma G Prime, mm. who actually now work with Rachel yes. literally every day, mm. you know. Um, so while Rachel got the consignment of acting on Sanyu and Palma G Prime. Have I seen you on Sanyu? Once in a while, yeah. I used to pop in once in a while, act yeah, as like a yeah. journalist or, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I was more um, prestige. Prestige used to show right after. Yes, I have yes. seen you on prestige. Yes. Now I remember. Now you remember? <laughs> now I remember. You, the, the, the very tall guy. Was my older brother. Yes. His name now, is Alvin. Yes. Yeah. See, I remember. You remember? Yes. So I used to act in that show. Mm. Um, I met people like Nana who really changed oh, I my love life. That one with big hair. Nana Kaga. The, the one that um... she used to act as Jasmine, and then yeah, yeah, I, oh, she really Where changed she? my life. I'm sorry, we're getting off. She has a, <laughs> she has a production called Savannah Moon. Check them out. They have amazing productions. I love her. Yeah, yeah. I met people like. Um, oh, but she's around. Creo. She's she's around. She's so so around. Please check her out on Instagram. She's yeah, such she, a she, very. She, she's. Uh, <laughs> She's such that's a That's one person I really want to meet. There's oh. something about her yeah. that says, I am going to do great things. Oh, she great is doing great things. Yeah. She's bold so, and she also encourages, encourages us as women mm. to be our best selves, you know, mm. which is I what she it. did could, You know, me. you can feel the energy from the energy screen. Energy doesn't right? lie. Mm. Energy doesn't <laughs> okay, lie. Okay, let's go with them now. It's about you. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I, I met people like that, people yeah. like Cleo. Um, who really just helped me. So as somehow along the way, industry. because you were all in the same spaces with your sister, you found yourselves. Did you audition for these parts? Um, I believe I did audition, mm -hmm. but I didn't get the role I auditioned for. Okay. Also, I really just didn't think I was getting in. So I did it as one I of those know, things of, like, let yeah. me get it out of the yeah. way. <laughs> and so the thing people don't realize is that you need to put yourself out there, especially in the entertainment industry in yeah. Uganda. Uh -huh. 
Don't think you're going to break out because, say, you're pretty mm. or you can act. You need to have that skill. It's not enough. Not just the talent, yeah. but the skill as well. You need, your the talent drive. is good, your passion is good, but once you add competence to it, once mm. you learn to be the best of it, mm. you're unstoppable. So now we know that she is sisters to Rachel, who acts as Melissa. Melissa. <laughs> And uh, these are both amazing. You're amazing. You're actually Thank amazing. You. Well. <laughs> Thank you. So then I I'm quite impressed. Yeah. So when you were doing the acting, deep down you're thinking, eh, this is a part-time thing, or yeah. you gave it your all. I did. So that's the thing. You don't have to think something is a full-time thing to give mm. it your all, which is one thing people forget. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite verses, and I really don't want to misquote, but I believe it's Colossians 5. Mm -hmm. It's in Colossians somewhere. Mm -hmm. It says, whatever you do, work at it with your heart, like you're doing it for God and not for man. Mm -hmm. And when I think of man, I'm not just thinking everybody else, because everyone likes to like disassociate themselves mm -hmm. with them being man. But even mm -hmm. myself, it's not about me. Yeah. Singing isn't about me. Being here isn't about mm -hmm. me. It's about the legacy I'm going to create Thank for people. You. I like that you Someone will watch this 20 legacy. years from now and think, that Kagal Kamanzi Bambi, she was able to, you know, so it's, it's mm. really not And you say you started out so young, and yeah. I'm wishing for the very best and great stuff for you Thank as you, you get older, because yeah. as you get older, the better. Yeah. Like right now, you sit and you hear about the, the Patti LaBelle's, the, the, yeah. the, the, and these names are still, are still going strong, They're super timeless. still, yeah. like, you think about it and you're like, yeah. yeah. And so to f answer your question, for mm. me, it, even while I knew that I wasn't going to do it full time mm. or forever, I knew that I had to put my hundred. I can mm. assure you, in a week, I used to come back from Mukono, because UCU is in Mukono. Mm. I would travel on a border from Mukono after <sighs> my classes three times a week and have to go back every day. Because I knew Mrs. Rego, my mother, was not going to ha hear me sleeping somewhere, somewhere else. I had to come yeah. back to Mukono every day for three times a week. Until I realized that, you know what, this is not viable. Mm. So I requested that the writers write me out temporarily, which is what they did. But guess what? From that show, from doing Prestige for about a year, a little over a year, I was mm. able to grab a consignment to do a Showmax movie that recently came out, a oh. Christmas movie in Kenya. Which you is know, that? It's called The Familiar Christmas. Ooh. I was acting with Pascal Tokodi, mm. Maureen, um, a lady that used to be in Elani in Kenya. Very, mm. you know, very prominent people yeah, in Kenya. Yeah, and that's good. That's yeah. good uh, for, your, for your career in general. Yeah, that's but I think besides it being good for my career, like I said, mm. if I, when I'm doing these things and accomplishing all these different things, all I'm thinking about is my little sisters and the plethora of girls out there who think that it's impossible for you to, say, travel to Kenya to act in a movie, mm. or for you to be able to do school. Or say, no, I'm not ready to move because, no. Yeah, I'm not ready to move. Mm -hmm. It's actually possible to, for you to do all these things. You, someone just needs to show you that, you know what, it's possible. And I'm so glad mm. that God has given uh, my sisters and I the liberty to be those people for many years. And hours. I must say, kudos to your parents. Well done yeah. to them because <laughs> they identified, yes. they went with it. Yes. Uh, I think especially your father who's like silently saying, hmm. <laughs> I know, and him being the only man in the home, the uh, yeah. truth is, it's easy yeah, for us to overpower him. You yeah, know how he can, can imagine. Be. I can imagine. Yeah, but my mom's really so done a good job you, as well. You're still doing your acting career in the mid of doing your music yeah. and while you're at school. Yeah. That yeah. is ambition. To be honest, um, as young people, you need to realize that I believe, mm -hmm. let me just clarify and say, I believe mm -hmm. that in your 20s, I'm now 22, mm -hmm. and I aspire to be in Forbes 30 under 30. Record this so that one day when I'm in Forbes 30 <laughs> under 30, you remember. Mm -hmm. I believe that it's time. You shouldn't close your mind to anything. Yeah. Don't. Don't allow it to be put in a box. Mm -hmm. If you feel like you can dance, go and dance. And mm -hmm. give it 100%. 100% if you yeah. feel like you can act, go act and do it 100%. Mm -hmm. And I realized as a young person, like I said, you need that accountability. So I knew my mm -hmm. parents were that for me. I didn't have the choice to drop out of school. I didn't. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Even while there were times I felt like, you know what, I'm done. I'm going to do music 100%. And it pays off because you, there are certain things that, you know, sort yeah. of fall back and influence who you are. I, they do. As a person. Yeah. From, and there's seasons me. in life. Right now, I'm making money through gigging and that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I know that there'll be a point where there's no money. I there. want to, a couple of years later, you know, I'm sure, your generation, a generation younger than that, will be hearing your name. Right now, I think a couple of people are like, oh, this young girl. Like, oh, you know, like, oh, yeah. And then one time someone's like, you're telling your story probably to someone. Maybe if we're still here, that would be awesome. But maybe you'll be telling someone, oh, no, but 
you know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, As I, I started like, out, yeah, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it's good to see that we have so many young people now getting into this kind of this line kind of work of. because today we don't discourage it as we used to in the past. True. It wasn't as lucrative in True. the past, yes? True. And to, to, to see um, younger girls say, I think I want to do acting, I want to do music. Yeah. Trust me, it's refreshing. It's so refreshing. And it people is. tend to forget that mm. you are unstoppable when you practice what you're passionate about. about. I can't stress it enough. Because mm -hmm. what you're passionate about will wake you up every day in the morning and you won't yep. feel... You come here, whether you have a headache, whether People it's raining. People will be like, why? Why is it so... Let me it tell you, if you called me to sing mm -hmm. and said, just come and... I can go wherever <laughs> I am, I'll go and sing. You know, because I'm passionate about it. Yes, indeed. So that's... It's sustainable. You can make a living out, out of mm -hmm. what you're passionate about. Girl, I've seen young people that are passionate about, say, hair. Mm -hmm. And maybe you're studying medicine or pharmacy. And they're telling you, you know, you're wasting I time. Have, uh, yeah. You I've, know? I've met people like that here where yeah. they say, well, I'm a doctor. Um, I'm a lawyer, but I also... You know, I, I do this and that. And you don't want to be the to... statistic of successful doctors or lawyers mm -hmm. who at 40 are saying, no, I now want to learn an instrument. And there's so yeah. many like that now. Mm -hmm. And yet your parents could have probably encouraged you while you were younger. Well, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so it's really about following your passion. So in the end, what we're uh, I, uh, acknowledging or agreeing on is that when you identify a talent, when you identify a skill, when someone is capable of doing certain things, yeah, it's okay, they can be encourage different. Them. Encourage, them. encourage them. Encourage them. Encourage them, yeah. encourage them. When you're younger, please don't be lost. Don't be like, I'm only 20, I have a lot of years ahead of me. <laughs> no, you start, and I'm sure you, you, you're out here challenging a couple of other people. Some may not like it, but we need to appreciate one another. We yeah. need to pick and learn from this. Yeah. So I want to hear your singing. You I don't do? know if we should first hear her rapping. What if it's both? It can be both simultaneously. Oh yeah, let's, do that. let's do that. Let's hear you do something for okay. us. Okay. Um, you know. So I recently, well, I don't know if it's recent, but I have mm. one official single out. I'm working on an EP now. Okay. Um, an EP is really like a baby album. <laughs> okay. Stands for extended project. Mm. And so this is one of my singles. Um, it's called Pity Party. Okay, okay. The reason I'm choosing to sing this isn't because it's my song and I'm doing a, what do you call it, Kalango. No. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's really because of the words. The mm -hmm. words mean so much to me. And so I hope it blesses anyone that listens to this. Yeah. Um, I wish I had my guitar. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, time has come for me to rise. I will not sit here and cry Every time I open my eyes I'm reminded of your love oh. Speak up, don't let the mic pass you by Speak up, cause you know what's going on inside. There ain't nobody in the whole damn world who's gonna tell it like you tell it. Call me passive or aggressive, yeah, it's true. We're each one of a kind, different mystiques, beautiful minds. If only we could make the most of what we all got to say. Turn up the volume and speak up with deep sobriety. No anxiety, no more pity parties, no more crying, no more crying, no more tears, no more pain, no more pain. No more pity parties. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> yeah. I am like. Please check it out. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, you sound awesome. Thank you. And you thanks so much so for having beautiful. us on our show. Sounds so beautiful. I must say, I'm like, oh. oh, oh. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Jesus Christ. This is beautiful. Thank you so much. I like that you're taking that direction. You, oh, that's a beautiful song, by the way. You wrote it yourself? Yes, I did. <sighs> I was, I think, so you even might see that's, yeah. that's beautiful yeah. because then you can express yourself. You don't need to wait for people, someone to, to you know, to, to, you. to sing for people yeah. what they feel. You, you're writing what, what you, feel you feel and feel. singing what you and feel. And you'd be so, so so shocked at how mm. many people resonate with your uh, authentic self. Yes, even hairstyle. And this is not just about music. That's what I want people to realize. You, you, you sort of have a, um, a brand that yeah. you make out and how. You look on how you're perceived and what yes, people see. And what everybody people. has that brand. Yeah, that's why you can never you, know, you can never be anyone you, else. They exactly. can never be you. That's, but you know, as a child, when yeah. I, even growing up, I struggled with it, mm -hmm. comparing yourself. Maybe because I know that I sing lower register than uh -huh. higher. 
And so most girls are singing higher register and it's like, oh my God, I can't sing. Oh, I've been God. through that. You yeah. know? And so along the way, you realize you're different I have and you're been, supposed to me, be different. I have yeah. been through that. And so many times when people don't understand your style or your voice. I can discourage And then you. you're like, okay, maybe I'm not good not enough. Not good at this or good enough. Yeah. And, you and are. I've been there. You are. I get what you're saying. You I've know? been there. And at some point, you're like, you know what? There's only going to be one row in now. So Thank it's you. Okay. And you <laughs> can't, <laughs> guys, no, in this life, no wahala. Be happy. <laughs> I like Enjoy that. your life. Be yourself. <laughs> like, there's no better person to be than yourself. Oh, my you know? goodness. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And I must say, um, we, we sort of have a, have a little more time. I don't know. My producer keeps doing like this. Like, <laughs> she also <just> <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. She's I'm not. Uh, that's yes. a good question. So, yeah, and, and, and of course, being that um, you're very busy, so many times people think, ah, oh, Christian girl, no dating. You know. Yeah, what, what is that like? For me? Uh, well, mm -hmm. I don't discourage dating at all. I mm. think I first dated when I was 15. Do you know? Really? And I told what my mom that? I was going what to marry that? my boy. Like, like, now I, I look back know. and I'm were, like, oh, You were taking cute. snacks for him. <laughs> and I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> and for me, that was the epitome of what our relationship was. About. Yeah. I guess my, uh, my advice, even to myself all the time, mm. is just have relationships that build you. Okay. Um, am I dating so, now? Mm -hmm. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not dating. I figured you're too busy for this. Uh, and maybe some people may not... There's boys, that. Boys do get intimidated sometimes. They do, mm. which is, it can be a good thing and a bad thing because you ward off like the... So, so you, want, you, don't, you don't get rid of the... Yeah. <laughs> Those who understand like the lifestyle. But, and but you have time, doing. darling. You have time. To be honest, I'm you not in a time. rush. Yeah, mm. I'm a living life. <laughs> taking my sisters out, going on spa dates with my girls. Yes. Like, yeah, but I'm not dating. Mm. Although I do not discourage dating. I think just packing uh, some, some snacks. Snacks, for you, you know the drill. Oh, that was writing so sweet. letters. Oh, and that was I'm so sure sweet. it evolves, but yeah, mm. now here we are. That was so sweet. So I hear you sing, and I insist to do a song with you. Pick a song of your choice, and let's do it. it. Ay, ay, ay. Oh yes. Oh. Uh, b before we got into that, I, I'm 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 scared now, you know. But <laughs> before no. we get into that, uh, something now at 22. I know you still have a, a long way to go, but at 22, something you just can never forget. Something that for you is vivid in your mind or is important. Hmm, like an experience. Yeah, yeah. That would be in 2018 while I was at Berkeley. Mm -hmm. Um, even while I was top of my class for most of the classes in my five-week program, mm. I knew I wanted to get into the uni. Mm -hmm. And so this one time, I, you know, I applied for a scholarship now to get into the actual uni. Mm -hmm. And I knew I was going to be in front of people that didn't understand where I was from, my culture. Mm -hmm. And I had planned to do a cover, a beautiful cover called, I don't know if you know A Thousand Years, Christina Perry. Ah, oh, yes. So I, for some reason, the effect it had on people while I was here was tremendous. So I went with this thing of, I'm going to go and sing and this I'm cover wondering. and show them what's up. Yeah. And so I enter the room and there's a panel of people um, who are very excited. Please come in, please sing your song. We're excited to hear from you. What's your name? <laughs> I'm like, I'm Kamanzi, I'm from Uganda. I was wearing African print. You really could see yeah, this yeah, village chick and... from UGA mm. representing the tribe, the clan. Mm. So, you know, I, I'm standing there with my guitar and in that moment I realized the only reason I was going to sing A Thousand Years was because I thought that was what was going to impress them. Mm -hmm. And so in that moment, I switched it up and sang a different song. <laughs> I sang a Luganda. I, it was a mashup of a song I had written with a bunch of friends of mine. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think Nsimye by, was it Nsimye or Oli Katonda? A, a Luganda song, really. I sang a Luganda song. And <sighs> in the middle of the song, I'm singing and I'm like, oh my God, I hadn't practiced. The words were probably wrong. Yeah, so you're in your head. I'm now in my point, head, in but head. I'm just yeah. like, let, I've started the song, let me finish, ah, the rest will figure itself out. Mm -hmm. I look up and I'm looking at this panel and some of them are crying, like, oh my God, what were you saying? It's so beautiful, <laughs> this African thing. In that moment, I realized that there was no better person to be than who I was, which is African. Mm -hmm. Express yourself as you are. Mm -hmm. Don't do things because you feel like you're going to impress other people. Mm -hmm. From that time, 
even the style of music that I write now is so mm. different. Mm. I won't, even while I grew up singing white people music, yeah, exactly. I don't say white people music, mm. but foreign music, Western music. Mm. Now I sing, Afri I like to sing African songs because mm. that's who I am, that's my heritage, you know? Mm. And so, yeah, for me, that's been the most, I guess, yeah, the biggest moment for me was just realizing that there's no better person to be than myself. That is true. Yeah. And once you start to drift away from that, then you lose the people that have started to realize what you are. Yeah, you lose, you lose mm. the essence of yourself. There's, mm. I mean, life is short when you think about it. Yeah. Methuselah in the Bible oh my goodness. lived for 900 years. Okay. Guys, cut off line now. It's so and... strange how a young lady is saying, ah, life is short when you look. <laughs> <laughs> life is short, but life yeah. has enough time for you to be exactly who what, you're supposed yeah. to be. Mm -hmm. You know, so you have to... If you're not who you are, you're really cutting off the yeah. line for so many other people who could learn from I you. Trust, yeah. you know? trust so, me, I, I do agree yeah. with you on that one. <sighs> so pick a song, girl, sister. <laughs> so sister, we're going to give them. I have no idea what song to pick because I am more into um, black women in, in the past and what they used to sing. But okay. You pick a song, let's see. Ooh. At last? Ooh. Let's do a last. Okay. Okay. Yeah, are you yeah. excited? But, but Etta James? Etta James, yes. Okay, okay, okay. You can start this and girl, know how many of you. You feel me, girl? <laughs> I'm your soul sister. That's why I'm here. Whew. You guys have put me on the test, eh? I'll okay. snap for you. I'll be a triangulist. Okay. <sighs> I've not sang this song in ages. Okay. Alas, my love has come along. Dum, dum, dum. My lonely days are over. Mm. And life is like a song. Dum, 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 dum. At last, the skies above are blue. My heart was wrapped up in clovers. The night I looked at oh. you. Ooh. Over to you. I found a dream. A dream that, that I, I can, can something. A dream that I could call my own. Yes, sing it, sister. I found a thrill to press my yes. cheek to a thrill that I, I'll never know. Oh, yeah, you, you smile. <laughs> Look at us, guys. Oh, my goodness. Ooh. Oh, that, that, that was, was good. Uh, mm, that was refreshing. Mm, 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 but, uh, you know. <laughs> Did you enjoy that? Did you feel that? I do love. I do love. That's um, awesome. I, I do James. love what we did there. But anyways. <laughs> Super fun. <laughs> um, um, this, this is a shocker for me. I never do this. But thank you. Thank you so much for making <laughs> thank time with you. us. Thank you for having I me I do well. appreciate. I yeah. really do appreciate to see young girls push. And you know, push and push and push. Yeah. Never stop yourself. Yeah. Never. <laughs> Never. We won't <laughs> stop pushing. Yeah. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Kamazia Super Soul. Sister, I must say, this has been quite an interesting quite one. <laughs> and uh, till next time, we do appreciate you for watching. My name is Rowena Kajumba. For me and the entire team, wish you a good night. Thank you so much. <laughs>